situations, the Asian situation. I was carrying all my paintings. So the customs people were asking me, I said, hey, are you part of the family? I said, what family? And they looked at the list of paintings I have. You must be part of the family. Then I, then I realized it's the Marcus family taking off from the Philippines. <laughs> I think uh, filmmakers and painters have a lot of things in common. We both tell people something they don't know. What stories interest you? Stories about people like us? Tell me about your travels. My work are like inspirations of the many places that I visited, the many cultures that I see. Like I would go to Burma and I would pick up their gold thread embroidery or I would go to India and I'll pick up the mirror embroidery or Nigeria, Africa with their tie-dye. And then all of these things I try to uh, put it in my work. But sometimes I get into trouble. When I was in uh, West Africa, I was painting a mulberry bark tree and it was fantastic to use. And then I brought them here, and I started sewing it and stuffing it. And I work on them, and all of a sudden, they're gone. So I said, bang, you know, I got to go back there and go get some more, you know? I was born and raised in Batanes, which is the northernmost part of the Philippines. It's a very small island. During the Marcos administration, I started a student demonstration in, in Manila, you know, which was, how do you say this, which happened all over the country. And because of this, my life was quite endangered. That's when I, my father said that I should go to Madrid and continue my law school. You know, the United States was the last country I would think of going. Because for me, as many other third world people know, US meant CIA. <laughs> when I reached San Francisco, I started going to school and I never reached Madrid. So moving to America turned your life upside down? Definitely. America sort of gave me my independence, you know. It gave me a freedom to do a lot of things. There was no family, uh, family members to say, don't do this, come home early, come home this time. You know, so in a way, I was free to choose what I wanted to do. People used to ask me, what do you call these things? Step into painting. The, uh, the technique of the work involves stitching, embroidery, and, uh, and a lot of sewing, and tie-dyeing. I remember when I gave a workshop some, some time in Mexico, there were so many men who took this workshop. They brought cassette tapes as a uh, substitute for threading, you know, so for sewing. I never realized that you can do that. So it's interesting because I learned so much from them and they learn from me and it's sort of a collaborative thing. We cut yellow like this. I started painting late. I was a late bloomer. But I have so much determination because, you know, I, I came from a big family. I came from a family of 12, you know, if you know what that means. And if you came from that kind of family, you tend to fend for yourself. You are going to use that as Art is for other people. Okay. It's not just for yourself, you know, especially for people like us. You know that you're an Indian and I'm Filipino. And uh, if you want to be included, you know, we don't have any choice. We've got to go out and tell them. Every Filipino that was coming out of the Philippines who was considered a suspect, a suspect of not having a, a real uh, passport, you know. So when I came to Hawaii, 
uh, they told me, the, I'm not Pasita, but, and they put me overnight in the customs detention center. You know, it made me really think. And then I started encountering a lot of my Ecuadorians, and the Cambodians, Vietnamese, and the Nigerians, and uh, everybody. And they had the same stories. So now I have a big series of which I call uh, my people of color, the immigrant experience. The masks from six continents. That is what my, my mural is all about. They came from Latin America, Asia, Africa, North America, Europe, and Oceania. These are all the different people I see in the train. Tell me, what have you contributed to this country, do you think, as an artist? Color. I have given it color. I remember when I was a student at the uh, Art Student League in New York, no? And we were all painting still lives. It was a gray November. The teacher came next to me and he says, but Sita, these colors are wild. And I said, well, these were the colors that I grew up with, you know, Chinese red, yellows, and orange. And I can't help it. I have to paint with these colors. <laughs>